So my name is Raphael, founder of ChangeUp. Um, we help you prioritize your personal finances. So today is going to be a bit of a story time. So this is for the non-tech startup founders that uh, don't know how to code. My story today is you should really learn to code from day one. Um, so, uh, so yes, we have the message there. Um, so. In 2015, I was the friend on Facebook that everyone bothered to like ask about income taxes and debt uh, elimination and choosing investments. Don't know why they asked me, but they just thought I knew the answers. Um, to my surprise, I discovered that there wasn't a platform out there that helped people from square one to get their finances organized. So what I decided to do was that I, uh, I dedicated an entire evening to write a proposal trying to find a software engineer. Uh, after several hours, I came up with a 26-page proposal, which was welcomed by several startup engineers saying that I was too ambitious, that the scope of work was too big, and that I shouldn't quit my day job. I took that, as a, uh, that advice as they were either being, they were over-exaggerating or that they were lazy. So I decided that I could have taken the next, uh, I could have continued down this path until I found a co-founder that would have helped me build my, plat uh, my platform or I can just shut down my consulting practice and teach myself how to code. So over the two month uh, process, I got onto Code Academy and I started with the basics. So with HTML and CSS and JavaScript, Angular, and went through. With every passing module, I gained confidence. So as I was learning to code, I was looking back at my proposal and I'm like thinking, okay, I understand what these software engineers are talking about. Um, I'm just saying very vague observations, and they're looking at this as, I really don't want to do all the work. So as I gained confidence, I discovered that software developers and engineers are some of the greatest people that you can ask about problems like online. So you can, uh, you can hit anywhere on Google on page one, and there is most likely somebody who has the same problem on the same exact line of code where there is an answer. So this became this thing where I, as I began to gain confidence, I was asking more questions on Facebook, which led to how I found my tech co-founder. I was asking something simple as something about Bootstrap Studio or something about AngularJS, which turned into a long, lengthy post thread, which turned into a private conversation. A few months later, he joined me, and we came together and made the platform change up. Looking back, 2017 was one of the longest years of my life. Uh, I ended my tenure at BCIT. Uh, so as a teacher for four years teaching business data analytics, we went from alpha to beta to launching a mobile platform that's on Android and iOS, where it's free for people. And our, our takeaway from that present, uh, my takeaway in how I learned to code is that looking back at this uh, moment, like just prepping for this conversation, I looked at the original proposal and I realized that I was completely out of my depths when I tried to initially approach software engineers. As well, the platform grew tenfold from the original proposal that I put together. Thinking about it, had I not taken the time to teach myself how to code, I probably would have never created ChangeUp. I probably would be sitting in the audience right now instead of being up here talking and sweating profusely. <laughs> so the other thing is, is that there's a lot of great startup communities in Vancouver. Uh, I got my orientation when I joined the VAP program in January 2017. And I learned a lot, and I realized that there's a really good community. So I figured today, just knowing that there's a few people in the room that are just starting as non-tech founders, take the time and do uh, take a course so that you can at least speak with your tech co-founder and actually understand when you ask for something, it's not going to happen overnight. So that's my takeaway. And uh, uh, one of the questions that a lot of non-tech people ask is just a closing remark, is a lesson learned, is well, why didn't you just pay for it to be done? I have my pros and cons about outsourcing the development of your platform. The pro is you'll get what you ask for. The con is you'll get what you ask for. And that's my presentation. So you're going to have someone run the mic. Oh, well, I'll run the mic. Uh, is there any questions? Someone shoot up their hand. And Dave, I know you have one. So, I almost felt like you were talking to me. Yeah, I know. Given what I just, spoke, like, I yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, 
I have, uh, I totally get the, uh, the argument in favor of doing that. And I think in some cases it makes a lot of sense. <clears throat> but I tend to think that if you're going to have a killer team, uh, if you're really going to execute, <clears throat> it's um, every, everybody on the, on the team should have their own superpower. Of course. And if you're going to play the role of CEO or CTO or CFO, yep. be really good at what you do and kill that and trust the other people you know, driving the thing to do what they do best. Of and I, I can see an argument that might be made, and I think I've made it. What do you have to say to that? Um, I, I, I see where you're coming from. Um, one of the challenges were like just, um, like as we're going from a startup to business, I'm kind of hoping that this actually takes off into a viable business. Um, I'm going to be letting go of the development side. So th there's things that, um, when I found my co-founder, we, we built the platform and then we came across another challenge was that, okay, hey, we got the back end, we got the pages where the app and the platform's supposed to be, front, is, front end's gonna be a piece of cake. That was the, one of the dumbest things I probably said in 2017. So the idea is, is that I had to understand as I'm building my team what their core competencies are so I could speak with them. So I, I don't wanna come off as an individual saying, oh yeah, you can just change the entire template on all of these features and it'll be done tomorrow. Like, so, Part of the teaching myself is like understanding the pain points of the people who would be working with me one day. So that, that's, I take the argument that, you know, it really was eight weeks of my life, but I'm now able to communicate with the software engineers and developers on my team. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. Uh, I have a question for you. I'm here. Sure. Oh, hey. <laughs> okay. I'm Chetna. Uh, I think my question relates more from a technical perspective. Okay. Um, when you are trying to select the technology, how do you determine which technology is the right technology to work with? And what do you learn first? How do you determine what to learn first? That's, so, that's the question. No, that, okay, thank you for the technical question. Uh, so in my limited, limited scope, there was a bit of an evolution of the platform. So I started on a Node.js, and I realized that I was going to put my head through the wall when I was dealing with Mongoose. But that was just on my capacity. I'm sure there's a lot of great Node.js developers. So um, it was really done by trial and error. So I went from Node.js to Python and then settled on Java Spring eventually. So um, I was in a fortunate position because I built my, my practice where I was able to teach part-time and uh, do consulting, so time wasn't really an issue and being able to self-finance. I probably took longer than I should have in building my platform, but uh, whatever, I'm, I'm here now, right? So it's, it's yeah, <laughs> very expensive lesson, so yes. I can imagine. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you're gonna be captured forever. Why did I raise my hand? <laughs> I wanted to ask you something is what did you like best when you ventured for the like doing the startup and then business and what did you dislike best like what was the worst what was the best okay uh, so what I disliked about the process and I, I think that we don't give uh, enough attention to this in the startup world is uh, I didn't really s spend enough time focusing on my mental health um, the idea that, you know, I'm trying to learn code and then I'm pointing at like the screens like, hey, look what I did. And like the, my friends who aren't tech, they're like, oh, hey, that's great. And like, you know, you just spent a week working on that. And it's like to convey like where your milestones were like, you know, it's like I thought that I was going ahead, but then like it's very difficult to show. So like during the development times that really, that really kind of sucked. But now that it, you know, we got to the finish line it, one way or another. Um, the good thing about the startup is the prospect that if I'm a complete failure as a startup founder, I was a finance consultant before, so if this startup blows up in my face, well, now I know how to do full stack development. So <laughs> that was a, so in case this uh, fails in six months' time, I'm also looking for a full stack <laughs> development job. Yeah? All right. So I'm actually really good. I, I, maybe not six months ago, but I'm really kick-ass now. So. <laughs> I think um, you raised a really important issue. Things like speaking amongst, um, speaking to people who understand, and this is kind of why we have this community, not to kind of draw it back to Tech Vancouver, but I'm gonna package it up. Um, Thank you. <laughs> That's great. It's wonderful to have a space like this because it allows you to connect in with peers and uh, have that support that you sometimes don't get and you feel oftentimes alone when you're, you're starting up. So yeah. thanks for sharing that. Thanks Thank for you. being vulnerable. Yes. <laughs> we had a conversation about that earlier. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Ralph.